Marcus Julius Philippus, was a Praetorian prefect under Gordian III, and when the emperor suddenly died, Philip was proclaimed emperor of Rome. Some authorities claim that his reign marks the true beginning of the crisis of the 3rd century, marked by a series of barbarian invasions across the Danube and a number of dissident generals revolting against his rule. The Arab Ascension Philip was born just south of Damascus, in what today is Shaba in Syria, into an Arab family in 204. Now he is often referred to as Philip the Arab as a result of his origins. He proved to be an excellent administrator, and he rose through the ranks quickly. However, little is known about Philip's early life and political career, but coming from less than stellar credentials of nobility, one can assume that Philip and his brother Gaius Julius Priscus were competent individuals, as they advanced militarily and politically despite little in the way of familial advantage. Priscus became a very high official to the 13-year-old emperor, Gordian III, and in 243, as Gordian III was campaigning against Sharper I of Persia, his praetorian prefect, Timasethius, became ill and eventually died. The Historia Augusta blames the death on Philip, but this can't be substantiated, and it's argued from hindsight Priscus convinced Gordian to elevate his brother to the office of praetorian prefect. Soon Gordian himself died of unclear causes, perhaps natural, or perhaps assassinated by Philip. We don't know. Despite the rumours, Philip maintained that Gordian III died of natural causes, and he treated the emperor's remains with the greatest respect, and insisted upon his deification. Philip was declared emperor by the soldiers. To shore up his new reign, Philip understood that he needed to get to Rome as soon as possible, so he quickly established peace with the Persians, essentially buying peace. Rome was forced to pay an indemnity of 500,000 denarii, but didn't lose much territory. But Armenia, which had been a Roman client state for centuries, was removed from Roman influence. Philip left his brother, Priscus, in charge of the east, while he set off for Rome. Philip's reign started with yet another barbarian incursion in the provinces of Pannonia and Moesia on the Danube frontier. They were finally defeated, but the legions were not satisfied with the result. But Philip soon assumed the titles of Germanicus and Carpicus Maximus and hurried to Rome. He arrived in the imperial capital in 247, where he made his son Caesar and proclaimed his wife Augusta. He even deified his own father even though he had never been emperor. This was an unprecedented measure, probably in an effort to shore up his reign. Despite not being a senator prior to his elevation, Philip seems to have enjoyed good relations with the Senate, and from the outset of his reign he reaffirmed the old Roman virtues and traditions. 248 also coincided with Rome's first millennium celebration. It had been 1,000 years since the city of Rome was founded. Multiple celebrations, theatrical and musical events, spectacles in the circus and the amphitheatre, literary and artistic displays were held to celebrate this momentous occasion. He celebrated the Secular Games, always a significant festival for the Romans, marking their development and power over the centuries. The ritual religious purifications associated with the Secular Games were probably felt by some to be long overdue, despite the fact that the Games should not be held for another 60 years, since there was supposed to be a gap of 110 years between each festival to ensure that only one celebration could be witnessed in one lifetime. The coinage proclaimed at the same time her title and her destiny. Roma Eterna. Rome Eternal. Revolts and Defeat Perhaps he felt secure on the throne, for, in 248, Philip cancelled subsidies payments to the Goths, and predictably, in the following year, they invaded Moesia and Thrace and laid siege to Marcianopolis. Two revolts broke out at the same time, one in Pannonia and Moesia, led by Pacatianus, who had been given an extended command over several provinces in that area, and the other revolt broke out in Cappadocia, 
or Syria, led by Jotapianus. Jotapianus' revolt proved to be short-lived as he was killed by his troops, perhaps shortly after Philip's reign. Philip was disheartened when he learned of these revolts and offered to resign, but a senator reassured him that the revolts would be short-lived. The senator was Gaius Messius Quintus Decius, now commonly referred to as Decius. Philip was evidently swayed and entrusted the defence of Moesia and the Balkans and the command against Pacatianus to Decius, with mixed results. Decius was able to put down the revolt, but was declared emperor by his troops. Some suggest that Decius suspected this would be the case, and warned Philip not to give him the command, but Philip insisted. Decius was confirmed as emperor towards the end of 249. The exact date is uncertain, but by autumn 249 he was fully established and he marched on Rome. Even before Decius had left Pannonia, the situation for Philip had turned even worse. The ongoing financial difficulties of the empire had forced him to debase the coinage, as rioting began to occur in Egypt, causing disruptions to Rome's wheat supply and further eroding Philip's support in the capital. Although Decius tried to come to terms with Philip, their armies met near Verona that summer. Decius easily won the battle and Philip was killed sometime in September 249. Philip's son was slain in the capital by the Praetorian Guard. Philip, the first Christian emperor. Philip the Arab was one of the first third century Roman emperors sympathetic to Christians. Although his relationship with Christianity is obscure and controversial, there has long been a debate about whether Philip himself was the first Christian emperor. We do know that he was born in the region of Oranitis, a region that had, by the time of Philip's birth, been extensively Christianized. However, that was mainly in the bigger cities. Philippopolis, Philip's birthplace, was just a small village at the time, and does not have a Christian inscription that can be dated earlier than 552. The most significant author to discuss Philip and Christianity is Eusebius, who served as bishop in Caesarea in Roman Palestine from circa 314 to his death in 339. Five references in Eusebius's Historia Ecclesiastica refer to Philip's Christianity, three directly and two implicitly. He describes Philip visiting a church on Easter and being denied entry by the presiding bishop because he had not yet confessed his sins. And he writes letters from the Christian theologian Oregon to Philip and to Philip's wife, Marcia Otticella Severa. And Eusebius writes that Decius persecuted Christians because he hated Philip. The remaining two references are quotations or paraphrases of Dionysius, Bishop of Alexandria, a contemporary of Philip. Dionysius contrasts the tolerant Philip's rule with the intolerant Decius's, and Dionysius implies that Severus Alexander and Philip were both openly Christian. Most arguments in favour of Philip's Christianity hinge on Eusebius' account of the emperor's visit to the church which is dubious at best, and in all other ways, Philip proved to be a very traditional Roman emperor, and his continual appearances on coinage and participation in pagan ceremonies continued to follow the state religion, and non-Christian writers do not mention his Christianity at all. And even if he secretly was a Christian, it had no great impact on the Roman state, nor did he legalise the religion. So, it would just be a small curiosity, a footnote in history. Final thoughts Philip was the first and last Arab to occupy the imperial throne of Rome. His brief reign was a small period of relative stability before the crisis of the 3rd century really started. Modern historians like Warwick Ball, in his book Rome in the East, The Transformation of an Empire, describes Philip's reign as remarkable because it saw an Arab ruling the Romans not as a conqueror, but as one of their own. It was remarkable too that as an Arab, he presided over the millennium celebrations as the embodiment of Roman civilization. Ball goes on and suggests that an Arab's elevation to the purple made a lasting impact on the Arab world, signifying their entry onto the world stage 
even preparing the way for their later conquests when Islam swept across the Middle East from the 7th century on. And if an Arab could become Emperor of Rome, then Arabs could hold their heads up with pride. Just a small fun fact. So proud are the Syrians of Philip the Arab that they used to have him on the Syrian 100 pound note, which shows that his legacy is still honoured in the Arab world. Philip proved to be a decent administrator who became emperor in a time that required not administrative skills, but military competence. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we make here on the channel. It really helps us grow and reach more people. The next video will be on Decius.